All right. Why do you always do that? <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Sitskill's Virtual Kitchen Show. We have a pretty cool guest next and a pretty cool company. I, I'm trying not to laugh because I've done a lot of shows with this person. But uh, we are very excited to have Try and Seafoods in the building, in a virtual kitchen. And we also have one of my buddies. <laughs> I'm going to call you my second wife. But Chris Prince is in the house. And uh, we're here at the virtual wow. kitchen. Here. <laughs> Robert. So, Robert, we have some stuff to talk about while we watch Chris here on multi cameras, which is very high tech for Chris, by the way. Um, what's today like? What are we going to talk about? What are we going to talk about today? Yeah, what are we going to talk about today? I talk about Trident's favorite product. What's that? Surimi Seafood. Oh, my God. Yeah. What is it? Stop what talking. is Surimi Seafood? What is it? What is Surimi Seafood? Well, some people might uh, inappropriately call this uh, imitation crab meat. Okay. But this product has been around in from one form or another for several hundred years, so we figured it's time to call it what it is, which is uh, surimi seafood. Well, we can. Yeah. And it, and it tastes really good too, right? Yeah, we can. Uh, it's it's almost the tofu of the sea. We can flavor it and do almost anything we want. And <laughs> you'll see desserts done with this product. It's protein. Hey, Chris, do you have some of that tofu of the sea? I do. Can you see in there? I don't want to tip over too much. It'll it'll dump into my sink. So. We got uh, we got three different kinds here. We got and they're all Cisco branded, by the way. So we've got the uh, flake style, uh, which is good multi-purpose salads, uh, good for. You know, Think about coffee. that Show me one by one. One by one. Okay, flake. One by one because it looks good. What'd you do there? Flake. We got the uh, shred here, which is my personal favorite, and then the uh, the salad style. So salad style and the flake are, are very similar. Uh, my personal favorite, and I'm going to use it a couple times here today, is the the shred, which I think is the the closest uh, the closest to a, an actual shredded uh, crab meat uh, body meat. So it is. Uh, I've, I've used it in a bunch of different ways, cold and hot. I'm going to show you two different ways today um, with two different recipes. So awesome. Well, Robert, yeah. like, cost wise, this is going to be this is save operators huge money, right? Yeah, it's a very inexpensive product, and, and you have to price it by the ounce because it's really a component ingredient. So it's not really folk. That doesn't really matter to focus uh, on a price per pound. You, you're not going to be portioning out six ounces. If you put a small amount to this, it's uh, it's seafood on the menu, and it's a very high quality protein. But you don't have to pay for it. Now, here is this product in the market. I'm sure there's multiple different kinds of product like this in the market. What are some of the things that people do to this product? Because I, I think there's Different chemicals that can apply to it, right? Oh, okay. You don't want to digest them this soon. <laughs> right? Well, if, uh, you know, this product is the quality Surimi seafood is really made from three ingredients, uh, more or less. You, you've got a high quality fish, um, typically with wild Alaska pollock. That's what we do. Uh, and then you're going to have some some starch binder, and then and then water, and then you can manipulate those three ingredients in, in different proportions. You know, to change your, your your quality and price sort of performance sort of levels. But if you're talking about what it's this, this, you said chemicals and scary things going on. Well, uh, you know, there are import products that you might find in Canada that are very low quality. And, and those aren't the things that people, we want people tasting because the, the, then they want to try it again. Yeah. Uh, Cisco uh, brand has, uh, oh, geez, close to a dozen different uh, SKUs in this mm -hmm. line. And uh, as I mentioned, there's there's different forms. The, the shred is uh, probably the most versatile form. And, and, you know, most people that say, I don't eat streaming seafood, well, you do, because you have California rolls probably. And um, that's the that's what's going into it. That's awesome. So Chris, what do you do? Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Oh. <laughs> this is my rudeness, hey, eh, Chris? First this dish. Is, for our viewers, this is Chris and my 4,000th show together. Yeah. First time from my home. Johnny, Johnny, and Ed. Where's the balloons and confetti? Four thousand shows. Yeah, Jay. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, but you know, today, today uh, first dish I'm going to do is an appetizer. I'm going to go through a couple appetizers and a salad, and then a, then a main course. Uh, first one I'm going to do today is a 
I just want to show the versatility of, of the of the, the shredded crab because um, I mean, you can see the camera here. But I, I, I like to cook with it. Um, it doesn't need much much of a, a warm up, but the shred really heats up nicely in a quickly in a little uh, frying pan, a little bit of butter. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick kind of a pub appetizer today. I'm going to do uh, crabby fries now. If anybody's been to Philadelphia, there's a, there's a famous Krabby Fries. I think they're all over the East Coast of the U.S. Uh, Krabby Fried, it was kind of I was kind of deceived by it. I thought I was looking forward to having some some kind of fries with uh, with Krabby, but unbeknownst, uh, Krabby Fries in uh, that area is just French fries with uh, Old Bay seed. Oh, sorry, crinkle cut fries, Old Bay seasoning, and then dip, and that's it. No crab. I was kind of disappointed. So. Without the use of a deep fryer today, I did some abominable <coughs> crinkle cut fries. I think the crinkle cut fries is the Saskatchewan French fry, right? Yeah, that's our Saskatchewan trademark. Uh, some Old Bay seasoning. Really good on seafood and fries, so we're just going to put a little bit on the, on, the, on the fries here. Do a quick toss. Uh, so this is like well, more like a poutine style, so I'm doing it in the, in the flavor of poutine. So I'll start off with the base of, of French fries, a little bit of spice. This is a good looking pickle cut fries. We're going to throw on some of the quick fried shredded, mm -hmm. um, shredded uh, crab meat, surimi. Robert, you know you, we've been working together. He just ignores me half the time now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm thinking Chris likes <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> uh, who, me? I said Chris likes his old base seasoning. He's got a huge uh, huge container over there. <laughs> I go does, that the, does that come in the keg size, Chris? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess a little bit of uh, shredded cheddar and then finish it off with, uh, with some cheese. Finish off with what? A little bit of uh, cheese sauce, like a nacho cheese sauce. Nice. Um, you can see it here. Okay, go back there. Up, up, go up. Run camera, run camera. There we go, right there. Look at that. Nice. Right on. Fish off with green onion. There you go. My dog is going crazy out there. <laughs> good. Look at that. Oh, I already took a bite. I couldn't resist. Whoa. We need smell of vision. Wasn't that supposed to be out by now? Smell of vision, yeah. We have a story about that once, too. Facebook app for that smeller net. <laughs> the smeller net. So that's the first dish. How many ounces did you put on that, uh, that plated uh, entree there? Very, very little. I put maybe um, three, two three ounces, two ounces. So the cost, very little. I think the, the plate appeal on that is you can get 12, 15 bucks on that as an appetizer. That's a huge plate of, of fries. It's 90% fries, maybe two liquid ounces of cheap sauce, uh, a couple sprinkles of shredded cheddar, and like I say, two ounces of, of the shredded uh, the shredded surimi. So incredible. Looks good. Uh, looks fresh and, and real. It's awesome. It's got a good taste to it. So when I'm off camera, I'm going to have this for lunch. So. <laughs> <laughs> All of our guest chefs cook themselves lunch on our show, just so you know. Oh, this is incredible. We're yeah. going to put Philadelphia and turn around those uh, Philly uh, crabby fries. Yeah, let's do it, Robert. Let's go do it. Oh, we'll get some crab crab on that, crab, uh, you want to come, Jay? We'll do a, we'll do a remote location. Uh. <laughs> you know what? Harvey's is going across Canada eating plant-based burgers. We could do seafood across Canada. We're going to yeah, fire up the RV. Let's do it. I'm All right. So, Chris, what are you doing next? I'm going to do, I'm going to keep going with uh, the shredded. So, I'm going to do a uh, crab crab cake. So, I did up a quick recipe uh, with some with the shredded crab. I did, uh, I don't know if you can see the camera. Now, is this sorry. crab or is it surimi? The surimi, sorry, the shredded surimi. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of sweet potato, some eggs, breadcrumbs, a little bit of seasoning, Old Bay seasoning again. Uh, some fresh dill, and I think it's that egg. So we're just gonna fry these up real quick, like a like a crab cake, seafood cake. If anyone wants to write and comment on Chris's cooking, please do. Uh, it's in the oh, comment section. Keep the feedback. 
you want to just quiz him because uh, he's been cooking for over 40 years. How many? Since he's been nine years old, hey? Yeah. <laughs> no, he was, actually. He started in Saskatchewan, oh, Regina, Saskatchewan, in a pizza place. Yeah, folding boxes one day. Next thing you know, he's a big Jay, corporate chef. Jay, that was my story. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you can take a little bit of the, the crab meat mix, the sumi mix. Just going to plop it in the frying pan. So this is a sweet potato base, you said? Yeah, so sweet potatoes shredded. Right on. Uh, a little did bit you of shredded or did you buy those shredded? No, I uh, bought a the whole uh, the whole sweet potato shredded up. My kid just came along and uh, stole the fries. <laughs> bonus, <laughs> my, bonus, bonus. Yeah, my personal bonus footage. Bonus footage. Hey, it worked for Ramsey when his kids came in eight. He doesn't listen, see. So, Robert, so Trident, yeah. tell us a little bit about Trident Seafoods. I know uh, we had Jeff on our podcast show a while ago, and he gave us a lot of insights. Yeah. How Trident Seafood, how are you guys doing out there right now? Well, we're doing really well overall. You know, uh, we, we definitely have our challenges with uh, the pandemic. We've spent uh, in the tens of millions of dollars on extra costs, um, making sure we can keep our plants safe and, and our workers uh, up to Alaska for our summer fishing season. Um I've talked about that on the podcast with you a little more detail so people can listen to that if they're interested to learn about that but overall we're doing very well we've we've had uh, no closures uh, for covid yeah. and uh, you know we've got oh, about 40 vessels in alaska 13 plants we've got uh, no those are the big vessels we see on tv all the time sorry are those vessels, those 40 vessels, the ones we see on TV all the time? Uh, some of them you will, yeah. yeah. Those who like to follow the uh, Deadliest Catch, you'll see some yeah. of our vessels uh, on that show, yeah. Yeah, we don't, uh, you won't see the Trident, uh, the Trident logo or flag advertised too much during that show, but you'll see it a little bit. Yeah, I, I do look for it once in a while, Alex. I do love that show. Uh, I do look for it once in a while, and when I do see it, I call it out. Hey, look, right? But uh, I'm sure there's some reasons why that's the case you guys would have it splattered everywhere well if you see uh, dutch harbor that's where everybody else is when they come and, and do the landings there but if they land in st paul that's only trident and if they land at accutan that's only trident we, we produce really? uh, process more crab out of alaska than anybody else so that's you our process it right, you process it right in alaska you don't ship it or anything it's all done up there everything's done up there yeah yeah and in the case of this product here this product's actually caught and processed mostly at sea or else otherwise at a shore plant in alaska and um and it comes down to the us and it's for the process how they work at sea can you just kind of share how they process that at sea because yeah. it seems like it's pretty tricky well you know what happened they uh the, the japanese discovered years ago that if they could wash out the soluble fats from fish they could preserve it so they could uh extend the shelf life of the refrigeration so that's where surimi came from we just basically catch while well, Alaska Pollock on board the vessel, we'll catch it with a trawl. So we we pull the bag through the water and, and capture uh, fish from the school. That way, pull it onto the vessel. And then if we process on the vessel, uh, we'll fill it and freeze those fillets on board the vessel. Or if we deliver to one of our shore plants, we'll do the same thing there. Either way, we call it frozen at source. Um, but in the case of surimi, we'll take those fillets and then further process them just by basically grinding them up. And then we do the same thing that the Japanese did. We wash it. Uh, with fresh water just to, to rinse out the soluble fats. So like yeah. I say, traditionally that was to preserve the product. Now like First Nations in Canada would preserve fish by smoking and dehydrating them. Yeah. For us it was getting the fats out because the fats are what turn around. So you're left with basically is pure protein. Uh, it's basically white and it's colorless. Well, aside from it's white, it's, yeah. it's no aroma, no flavor to it. And you can do all kinds of things with it. So. Yeah, we take that, we freeze it into blocks on board the vessel, these commodity blocks, and then from there we take it down to a plant that's uh, it's probably four hours south of Winnipeg in uh, Minnesota. And there we basically mix it with, um, like I say, there's, there's a number of ingredients to go into it, but essentially it's going to be binder, it's going to be some water, it's going to be crab flavorings, uh, some traditional ingredients that the Japanese use, like mirin wine to add the sweetness to it. Oh, wow. And, yeah, yeah. So you could do anything with it. Um, yeah, it's a very versatile product. And, and right now, 
you know, we're thinking operators are looking for, for, for margin wherever they can get some. And uh, this really allows you to dress up your menu. You mm -hmm. know, dish, you've probably added, Chris, what, $2 to it by, by just being able to say crab or seafood? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so you're, that's going to be mostly margin. So <clears throat> it's very versatile. You yeah. can have lots of fun with it. You know, people like to amp things up. Um, but everyone's trying to spin and, and, and do easy dishes. It's fully cooked, ready to eat. It's also a domestic product because it's produced in the U.S. and then comes into Canada. It's all domestic, nothing offshore. There's there's no China factor or Asian production, or anything like that. It's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. So, Chris, what are you doing now? So, I'm just going to plate up the, the crab cakes here. Uh, they're, all, they're all fried up and, and ready to go. This is one of Chris's favorite these these fried real nicely with a little bit of binder. I had like some uh, one egg for I think it was about uh, ten ounces of uh, of the shredded surimi, and uh, some breadcrumbs, a little bit of seasoning, some diced onions. Um, it it uh, yields out real nice, and the cost is just very controllable. Uh, Going to put a little bit of uh, a little bit of chimichurri style uh, parsley and garlic sauce here. Nice. And a little bit of remoulade, which is just basically a little bit of mayonnaise and some some ketchup and some chopped up pickles, kind of like a secret sauce from a famous burger place. I won't mention it. <laughs> so, this is great alternative for like like places that you can't get away with using crowd because it costs. Um, so pubs and even restaurants and everything takeout. You know, getting crab meat's very difficult, and getting sustainable pre, like you know, pre-picked yeah. crab meat can be a challenge as well. Um, basically, using this this product allows you to to call out seafood on your menu, and, and it allows you to call out crab if you're using one of the recipes that contains crab meat as well. So there's there's a few different uh, specs available within Cisco brand. Um, some will contain crab, some won't. But the quality is generally the same. Crab, adding some real crab meat just allows you to call out crab on the menu, but the product performs very similar. Oh wow! Yeah. So here's because your fish. Are you, you going to take a bite of that, Chris? Because you can't just. I, I won't, it, but I think I'm going to do it off camera. <laughs> I'm going to start the next plate. Come on. 3,000 people want to see you eat that crab yeah. cake, buddy. Okay, Chris. Yeah, he anyway, twist his arm, eh? Who's was... working Expo for you today? Eh? One match show. Look at that. See, so. So yeah, this is something that I can see in pubs, just a great alternative. And, and that's the whole thing about our shows is really helping our customers with inexpensive ideas and ways they can cut cost, right? We had a show today with Tedley and they use teas for infusion for meals and teas, pennies a glass. Like all these things are really important to our operators right now. Yeah. Well, I think people are looking for fully cooked as well, right? Less handling. Yeah. Yeah. So people are focused on risk right now and huge. It's ready to eat product, so it's very easy to incorporate the recipes. You typically use, you know, typical recipes. So if you're something out like a like an udon or a hot and sour soup or something like that, you can take that shred and just just sprinkle just a half ounce on top just before it goes out, and it uh, looks great. And it just adds that extra little bit. Long shelf life? Oh, frozen a couple of years thawed. And the if you thaw a, a case, there's these two and a half pound bags. As long as it's sealed, you're good for really 120 days. We'll say 60. Um, Previously frozen. Once you open it up, it's it's like any other seafood. Really, five days. Yeah, is, is what we'll say. Yeah. So uh, Robert, the way it's packed too. So it's, it's flat packed. It, it thaws real quick in the fridge overnight. So you don't have to, you know, put it in cold water. It's 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 there to go, and it's awesome. Hundred percent yield. No purge. Like there's no liquid purge when you when you thaw it out either. You definitely. Yeah, price price equates to quality uh, with any seafood product, but surimi as well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. If the price is lower, it's there's a reason for it. So, Robert, question for you on seafood. I know this may be outside. We do have a comment here. Casey always has Trident hat on. <laughs> from, the, from the show. We were commenting about the show. Sorry, Jay, was that a question? You lost me there. No, someone just commented cats and said Casey always has tried an hat on. Oh, on like, you know. the TV show. I said I could run to I could run to the closet and get one. <laughs> it's okay. I want to try that shirt, see? 
We've got Trident Proud. This is what all the staff are wearing. Well, I'm sure if anyone wants inquiries about samples or follow-up calls about the TV show, you can contact Robert. We'll talk about <laughs> the show and everything else about Trident. Yeah. Hours and night. hours. <laughs> Late night talks with Robert about Trident. Jay knows me well enough. He's given me he's given me a, a muzzle today. Yeah, exactly. But if you look at the bottom of the screen, try to see food sales at try dot com. Um, that is a monitored email address that that will not disappear. We will see that. So uh, send me your inquiries. Love to help out. Yeah, get some ideas. We'd love you to get help. I do Trident. Yeah, as a matter of fact, actually, if, if any operators are looking for serious help right now, um, they can go to our regular website and uh, click on the food service link. And there's actually a form there they can go to if they need assistance with something. And it, it could be anything out of the sun. And, and we put that up sort of trying to offer a service. And, and those also get monitored very closely as well. That's awesome. Yeah, so right in for your free. So much help, hey? There's so much help out there right now. Uh, we're, hey, we're all in this together. So what's Chris Sprint's doing there? What are you doing? Okay, next up we're going to do uh, the sea leg salad, as they call it, from uh, it's right off of the Trident website. It's an amazing salad. Uh, so I'm going to just do up a real quick dressing here. I got a little bit of uh, canola oil in there. Uh, add a little bit of uh, rice vinegar. Could you use the olive oil, Chris? Uh, no, don't use olive oil in a, in a salad dressing like this. It, uh, it, it the the sweetness of the, of the olive oil will compete with the rest of the flavors a little bit. Uh, you want to have a, like a neutral uh, oil, like a canola, corn oil, or... Uh, and then I, Robert, he just told me it would taste good. So, yeah, this is basically a California roll bowl. So we're taking the bowls, which are very popular right now, um, and we're taking California rolls, which are very popular, but you don't want to have to have a sushi chef uh, rolling in the back of the kitchen. I'm not going to try. <laughs> a, little bit, uh, a little bit of wasabi paste. A little bit of uh, soy sauce. Chris, you're really good at making sushi rolls. I remember. I used to do it. I've done it in years. I, know, I, know. I, we, I brought in a sushi chef for you once. He taught you well. Very simple to do. A couple of ingredients there, and really easy to do the dressing. Uh, prepared, so I got some sushi rice here, uh, so it's still nice and sticky, just in the cooler, under some, uh, under a uh, cold wet cloth just to keep it uh, firm and, and sticky. Just want to add, like, like Robert said, you just, uh, it's almost like a deconstructed California roll. So, Chris, that dressing, is that basically the same type of vinegar dressing they would normally use um, in the rice, incorporated in the rice? Or is it a bit Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I put rice vinegar as well when I cooked off the, uh, the sushi rice this morning. It's not a very traditional way of, uh, of preparing. It's also a safety feature because uh, there, um, there are bacteria that live on dry rice. So you want to traditionally why Japanese chefs will put vinegar on the rice to especially sushi rice, which is a little bit sticky because it has uh, sugar in it. And also the, uh, the acid in it will, will preserve the rice and kill off any bacteria. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of uh, a little bit of rice on some greens. We're gonna mm -hmm. use the salad style, sorry. Nope, we're gonna, we are, yeah, we are gonna use the uh, salad style crab on this one, sorry me. Yes, those, those in food service that have used surimi for years will, will mostly um, recognize the salad style. Essentially, it's these bias cut slices that's supposed to resemble uh, basically a, 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 pair, a pizza, that, that, that choice Maris meat that comes out of the, the most desirable part of the leg and then it's been sliced. Um, you can take that and you can make it with hands or a paddle uh, and, and uh, shred it up a little bit. But the the shred style will get you more yield. It's the shred style is more expensive per pound, but it yields a lot better. So there's yeah. no cost impact and their savings in terms of uh, back and forth. But that that salad style allows you to to, to put the to show a little, a little more excitement that way, and um, it works perfect for the bowl. It's awesome. 
We're going to start with a little bit of uh, fresh avocado slices here. You're making lunch for everyone, eh, today, Chris? I am making lunch for absolutely everybody. Some ribbons of So we, see this, we see this a lot, right? What a great idea, simple idea, very cost effective for operators, right? You know, you could you could you could dress it up a bit with some of the uh, the, the diced uh, ahi tuna if you wanted to, but to actually uh, one of the largest pokey chains in the West here out of BC, uh, their number one ingredient that they purchase for for protein is is serving seafood. So really? it, people are accepting that. Yep, absolutely. Cool. Very cool. A little bit of shredded carrot, and then we just drizzle some dressing on here. How much do you think we go for, Chris? Very healthy, very healthy plate. See it there. Nice fish. You can you can prepare this well ahead of time. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, things to finish off. You're just decorating and, and building your plates off of this, but a little bit of sesame on top, some shredded nori, some uh, seaweed paper there. And it gives a nice crunch and a nice sea, sea, uh, seafood flavor. And uh, very, very cost effective, lots of protein, very little fat. Uh, this a little bit from the uh, coal oils and the dressing, and of course, the healthy fats from the avocado. Awesome, Chris. There yeah, you go. says, very cool idea. Great, good work. Yep, Chris. Chris, did you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Danny said, very cool idea. Good work, Chef Chris. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. Awesome ideas. So one last dish. We're going to just finish it off with a little entree. I've got some uh, Salisbury steak cooking off here. we got some nice Salisbury oh, beef. So Chris, for a lot of our younger viewers, what is a Salisbury steak? Salisbury steak takes me back to my childhood. One of my favorite dishes my mother used to make. Basically, it's hamburger, hamburger steak, traditionally served with uh, mushroom sauce or um, a canned mushroom soup sauce, which works out really well. Uh, and just it is a nice meat, meat and potatoes uh, kind of a meal. Fire halls, they call it the number one. Uh, so every rookie in every, every rookie in the in the in the in the fire department world, uh, learn is not a cook. The number one, as they call it, and that's salisbury steak with rice. So we've yeah. got three Saskatchewan boys on the call today, right? Oh, Jay, yeah. we're yeah. Guys. So this is how you get guys in the prairies to eat seafood. That's right. The top of the head. Slap it between two salisbury steaks and add gravy. Right. So I'm going to build uh, the the Oscar sauce here. So I'm sauteing off just a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of white onions with the with some butter. So what's in an Oscar sauce, Chris, for the young viewers? So traditional an Oscar sauce is a cream-based sauce with the, the cooked crab meat. I'm going to use the shredded uh, stringy swan here. Uh, and then topped off with a little bit of uh, asparagus and hollandaise. Uh, like I say, I couldn't get any asparagus uh, yesterday, so I'm the, the, the part of asparagus being played by the green bean today. You know, Chris, remember I told you, never tell the truth. <laughs> Just don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> exactly. It was meant to be. The green. Well, that's Saskatchewan, right? <laughs> but look at asparagus green stuff. The weed. So if you want to do a hot application, you want to buy a higher end one. You want to have uh, the highest amount of, of fish protein in that to, so that mm. it keeps this integrity for heating, but any of the Cisco branded ones will, will work with gentle heating and you don't need to have something sit and simmer in sauce because it's, it's ready to eat right out of the package. So um, using the dress dishes as they go out the door for hot applications um, might be. So is there stuff that we should be able to just watch out for when it comes to buying this product? Like what are the smells? Like, can I talk to you about seafood and smelling, Robert? Yeah, absolutely. What's yeah. the story? Tell us the truth about, I go in a grocery store and I smell seafood. I 
I've been told in the past to get worried. <laughs> should I be worried when I smell seafood, or should it never smell? It depends if it's a, what we call fresh ocean scent or not. That's in a lot of specifications. We'll oh, no, I'm talking that bad. If it's bad, bad, no. Yeah. You know, if you're going into a fishmonger and it stinks, that you know, maybe their cleaning practices aren't good. It could be, but I mean, you're gonna have that scent too. If you open a package of, of this product, there's a lot of uh, egg in it as a binder. Mm -hmm. So when you first open it, you may get a bit of that egg smell, but as soon as you Open it and let it breathe, and it has a very wonderful flavor. So you shouldn't pick up anything like that. But if you are shopping for Surimi, um, definitely look at the ingredients. If water is the first ingredient, uh, then that's definitely a value to your product, and it will work well with heated applications. And uh, you know, there's an expression: uh, "Good seafood isn't cheap, and cheap seafood isn't good." You know, you get what you pay for. But there's there's always deals and things that happen. But outside yeah. of the general generalization, you know. The other thing too is you want to, something that's different with seafood in terms of other proteins is the supply chain. You know, at seafood there's so many there's so many different varieties of seafood around the planet, uh, and and many 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 traders and layers of, of supply chain. So if you're dealing with products that come from Trident, you know, we are the fishers. So we, we the fishermen that are employees of the company have caught this product and processed it and done our primary processing in Alaska with our in the US, lower 48. It's all been tried on people all the way through. So we have full traceability off of the, the code off the box of that certain seafood and that value added form. We can take that right back to the raw material when we caught the fish in the ocean in Alaska. We can tell you oh, what, wow. what, 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 what area, what hour of the day. Yeah, so it's important. And seafood, of course, uh, traceability and um, transparency is very, very important. And mm -hmm. the industry is moving towards that. but. It, it tried it's always been ahead of that we've been fortunate just because we're our largest and, and we've always been vertically integrated. it's a bit different this product will will, will meet uh, msc it'll also meet uh, ocean wise so any 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 eco label any 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 uh policies for sustainability or corporate social responsibility uh, a chain or an operator may have there will be no issues at all with this product cool. as a matter of fact uh, this is made in wild Alaska Pollock, which is typically the largest fishery in the world, but uh, definitely the largest uh, certified sustainable fishery overall as well. So it, mm -hmm. we love championing uh, wild Alaska Pollock. You'll hear me say wild Alaska Pollock many, many times. And when we talk about wild Alaska Pollock, you might be picking up on that. Uh, it's because we really believe in that that, that species and that fish. It's, it's an almost impossible resort. It's managed, there's only lots out there. Chris, what do you got going on there? Well, we are ready to play here. I've got the, uh, the Salisbury steak and the potato tower here. Oh, nice tower. Uh, finished off the, the sauce. So as I said, I was using the shredded, the shredded surimi style with some uh, whipping cream. Uh, reduced a little bit with some fresh dill again and uh, some salt pepper. Very, very low cost. High plate of feel, nice dish. You know, and if all you had in the in the cooler was the the salad style, it would work yeah. really as well. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. I uh, if I had to pick one, I would hands down pick the the shred style. So uh, Chris, the cost on something like that, because you use a Salisbury steak, is is going to be so much so inexpensive for people. This plate cost will be for sure under four dollars, and you mm. can get, really get twenty bucks out of this. Nice, very nice. Very simple. Very simple. And there you go. Whoever likes it. I like it. I'm glad we brought back the Salisbury steak for this episode. <laughs> it's like Frank's. Is it Frank's? The lady says I put that on everything, right? Yeah. Right. Now, do we put Salisbury on anything? I put tapatio on everything. <laughs> put surimi on your crab meat. There you go. There you go. Amp it up. Awesome. Well, there. Thank you. Four quick pitches there. Um, if you have any questions or you want to see the actual recipes on here, uh, the three I kind of did uh, ad lib here from scratch, and they won uh, bowl style uh, California California roll salad is uh, is on the Trident website. My dog is crying. I got to feed her. She's going crazy here. It does smell good in here. Uh, but real simple recipes. I I did minimal prep here today. Um, it's super easy to, to execute these these plates and for home and for for a kitchen of any sort. So 
All right, there you have it. Great ideas, and then we'll have the link on the bottom to your site, Robert, so people who can grab ideas if they do watch a video and go, I don't know where to go, go there, or they can go to sales at tridentseafoods.com for other ideas and to contact you. Right on. Right. Well, so thank you, man. Yeah, thanks, Robert. We appreciate you coming on board. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Robert, for your time today. For everyone else, we got more shows coming up. Right, Chris? Maybe we do. Yeah. Uh, In a few weeks, uh, watch, watch, uh, watch the Instagram and Facebook with Cisco, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be posting those in a few weeks, so make sure you come on and watch these shows. Awesome. Yeah, we have more shows with Robert and Chris coming up in August. We Steve. have way more shows. We have more. We have another show tomorrow. I don't even know what day it is. Today's what Tuesday. We have a show tomorrow. A show on Thursday, and then we're back after the holidays for more shows, and more time with Chris. And we'll see Robert back in August, middle of August. I think it is. Absolutely. Right, thanks again, Trident. Awesome company. Great ideas. Uh, Chris, you a lot of feedback here coming through on Facebook. So awesome. thanks again, and uh, we'll see everyone soon. And thanks, have you. a great day. Thanks, Robert. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.